So I've been playing with some music apps on the iPad and today I thought I'd look at a couple of those, well one in particular, Step Poly Arp. We'll, we'll get to that um, in a minute. First I'm going to just show you briefly this thing. This is called Xeon. This is a, an analog synthesizer. Well of course it's not an analog synthesizer at all really. It's a digital implementation of a, a, an analog synth and it's a great synth. It's got some great, uh, it's got everything you need and we're not going to go into the details of this this is one of the presets that I really like. This is But the thing I really like is this thing along the front. This is a 16 step sequencer. And you can use this even if you're a non-musical person like me. You can do this to program sequences. Let's just say you want to get a sequence going. It's kind of... So you can program that onto the sequencer in a couple of ways, but the most simple way is to put on the right and auto increment and just play it through. It doesn't have to be up to tempo, you can do it slowly. That's 16 steps, and now it'll play that back. And of course you can mess with it as well. So that's great, just uh, to be able to mess about with that and experiment. But the problem with this is it's very limited. Um, mainly, it's got 16 steps. It plays them through. And that's all it does, in terms of automation at least. You can't even save the sequence. And more importantly than that, the only way you can actually automate this synth itself is as an audio unit. AU3, if you're familiar with Mac and iPad audio, uh, you'll very quickly come across things called audio unit, uh, audio bus, interapp audio. This doesn't it, it doesn't support interapp audio, which is an absolute pain in the backside. Uh, but you can run it as an AU3 plugin inside something else, such as Cubasis, or um, well, well, let's just stick with Cubasis for now. That's my um, digital audio workstation, the, the editor and arranger hub, if you like. But the problem with that is, if I just flip over to, I've got that running inside of uh, audio bus. Uh, where are we? The problem with that is when you run it as a, an AU3 plugin, you get everything except <laughs> the sequencer, which is which is disastrous if you want to play around with it in a wider context. So, that being said, leads me on to what we're really going to be looking at today, and uh, that's an external sequencing app to drive Xeon or anything else, and that's called Step Polyarp. So if we look at that. So this is Step Polyarp, and at first sight this looks a little bit well, not exactly complicated, but a little bit more complicated. It does basically the same job as that 16-step sequencer that we looked at inside Xeon, but it's way, way, way more flexible. And, I mean, it's just... I, mean, I just love this. <laughs> it's just very compelling once you start playing about with it. And uh, it's not that difficult to get to grips with. But under the hood... I should say this is not a review of this product. This is, if, if anything, it's a first impression, first you know, proper go through with some of the features. And uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of subtlety that I haven't figured out or even touched on yet. So anyway, that said, we're going to use this to drive Xeon. I will start off with a similar sequence to the one that I played just a, a moment ago. Now I said this was much more flexible than the sequencer inside of Xeon. 
In fact, it's more than a se- it's a sequencer and it's an arpeggiator. Now, if you don't know the difference, well, we'll, we'll get to that. I'll, I'll look at some of the arpeggio stuff as we go in this little project. But we're starting off with a um, a basic preset here. And uh, so left to right, we've got 32 steps. I'm going to li- limit this because we want to use that same 16 step sequence. I'm going to limit this to 16 steps. I'm going to do that by, you can limit each of these lines ind- independently if you want, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to press, press this link lengths. There's actually a spelling mistake there, I've noticed. <laughs> Don't let that put you off. Uh, the rest of the quality of this today is um, very robust and flexible. But we've got, the lengths are all linked. So if I just um, select one of them, and I'm going to drag that till we've got 16 steps. And then at the moment, if I play through that, it's just defaulted to a single note repeated. It's not very exciting, but if I were to move these, if I move these notes up and down just randomly, um, you can see how that works. So I'm just going to set up that same basic sequence that we did in Xeon. Now, it would help if this down the left hand column we had notes. Um, we don't have that. We've got um, these are steps. Now, these are steps on a chromatic scale. I'm, I'm saying that because if you look at the bottom here, just above the keyboard, it tells you that the scale selected is chromatic. That means we've got the 12 notes. That's the black and white keys in a, on a piano keyboard. So, zero is, if you like, it's the uh, middle C position, plus 12 would be an octave above. So if we were to just, for example, um, put put that those up to octaves, let's just do that as a short, oops, as a short test. Yeah, so you can hear those are octaves. So if we set that pattern up, I think this is it from memory, you have to sort of do this out in your head, sort of, like a rhythm. And let's play that through. There you go. And when that repeats, well, you can make it auto repeat by the way, if you click, click this latch thing and then when you press it, it just stays pressed. Now it's set up, if I just look at the MIDI, MIDI setup, um, at the moment it says it's connected to audio bus. You don't need to know about the reason reason behind that. That's just the way I'm recording this. Uh, if I go to, I hope I don't mess this up. <laughs> if I go to sound, um, you can see it's got all these built-in sounds. If it's not connected via MIDI to a, an output, it will actually play its own, its own sounds. Now, now actually I'm not gonna mess with that because if I mess with that, guaranteed I'll screw up the recording. So for now, all you need to know is it's sending MIDI signals out the back, <laughs> logically speaking, and they're being interpreted by Xeon, the synth that we looked at earlier. And if I just flip over to where that's set up, that Xeon is actually set up as an audio unit inside of Audio Bus, which in turn is feeding into AUM. You can look all these things up. And the preset I've got set is the same one that we looked at earlier. I could just illustrate that. If I set a different preset up, I want to choose the one that's going to be rational. Let's try that one. Go back to step poly up and play it again. Now, that's recognisably different, but uh, you'll also notice it doesn't play as cleanly. It's not as nice to listen to, even though that's quite a nice oops, preset in its own right. Where am I going? In its own right. Now, this is, you know, again, once you start messing about with synths, you'll, you'll get a nose for this. This particular preset has kind of a slow attack and release. Um, if you look at the amp envelope, 
that means you can't really do rapid sequencing. It just mushes into it. If I were to change some of those parameters, like the attack and the release, particularly the release, and maybe on the filter envelope as well. That will probably sequence better, so if we go back over to Step Poly, I'll play it again. Well, it's getting there. It plays a little bit better. But anyway, so we're going to, we're just going to set that preset back to Future Singer 2. And here we go. So that's a good start. We've got the thing set up um, as a sequence. Now, here's another thing. You can add a second sequence. You can add up to 16 along the bottom here. And uh, if you press the plus, it copies the current sequence. So if we step to the new one, then we can edit it to be subtly different. So let's say... Uh, Looks like a, oops, good one. Now the other thing we can do is we can automatically chain these together. So I go to step one, and if I press on that, I can auto play next pattern after playing that through one time. And then if I do the same on the second step, it should go back to the start. So let's see if we can hear the difference between those two. Good. I'm going to swap the order of those as well, just because I like uh, hear it that way. And we'll try one more. Uh, let me see. If I we won't try one more, let's just throw in a little bit of a extra thing here. So we're going to put in this third sequence. Now here's another thing. You'll notice that although we can select very various notes across the octave above and below the original note over here on the on the left hand side we, we don't have access to them all now that's limited by the screen space of course so we've got um, plus two these are semitones plus five seven nine twelve those are common intervals that you might want but you can change those and at the moment i want a different interval i want the octave and then i want uh, i think 10 so i'm going to change that to um yeah you click and drag it up or down um, 10, 7, what do I need? I want, um, so 12, 11, 10, 7. Okay, there's a sequence. Let's try that. That isn't quite what I want. I'm going to move it over a bit. Can you move them over? Okay, so there we've got a nice, interesting sequence. And if I chain those together, and play it through. That's a 
that's great, but that's not really, uh, that sort of recycles too quickly. So what I'm going to do is if I go into the second sequence, click it, and I want it to play twice. So if I click the two times, if I go to the third sequence, I want that to play, I think we'll play that four times. And then it'll repeat. So um, let's just save this as we go. So I think so. Start from the beginning. Now it's just playing one note. And back to the start. So we've got the makings of a piece of music there, essentially. Now it's not finished by any means. Um, so what are the parameters here? We need to look, be aware of, we've got um, the, it's a 16 step sequence. So 16 steps is one bar, uh, 120 beats per minute. This link says one to 0 0.02. That's I think because it's, it's been driven by an external MIDI clock from, um, I'm not really sure about that actually. Why should, I think this should be driving the MIDI clock, but I think I've got it set up so it's getting the MIDI clock from Audio Bus or AUM or something. But anyway, that's 120 beats per minute, uh, four beats to the bar. So one minute would be 120 divided by four, so 30 bars. I think that's right. Uh, <laughs> if I've got that wrong, just ignore me. I'm a musical uh, novice, should we say. But, but that'll help you calculate the length of, you know, so at the moment we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars. So if we were to run that sequence four times over, we'd have about a minute, well, 28 bars. So that's pretty cool even as far as we've got, but there's more, goodness me. Um, that's, that, that's nice when you play it through. Now, incidentally, I'm just playing one note through here. You can, using the keyboard here, change the note on the fly. So there's the performance element to this. So if we just have a look at that. change the note as you go as well but the thing I want to look at now is you can you can actually modulate some of the synth parameters you remember earlier when I was showing you Xeon I was tweaking some of the parameters live uh, if you look at the strip below the grid you've got this thing that says velocity modulation pan volume after touch pitch bend so those sound like modulation parameters if you know anything about the synth front end and Velocity now, just going back to Xeon. Although that's a nice preset. It's not as flexible playing it on the keyboard here as it would be playing it on a, a MIDI keyboard with velocity sensitive keys. This, when you hit these keys, although the velocity is set up in this patch to modulate the filter envelope, whenever you touch a key you always get maximum velocity. If you were playing this on a MIDI keyboard um, you get much more subtlety. Now just that said if we go back to SEP polyarp, if we look at this velocity parameter you see we've got a, a set of sliders effectively and these sliders will send the velocity modulation parameters across the MIDI signal to the synth. So if uh, if I just put them back on 100 there, and if I switch in between min and max, or min and 100 as we play, you'll hear that just as an introduction to the concept. So that's velocity 100, then velocity minimum. Actually, that's zero velocity. Put it back on 100, set it going. 
Put it on minimum. Can't hear anything. 100. Max. Subtle difference. 100. Minimum. And if I bring it up just by draw, I can draw on there with my finger. Or I can set those sliders individually. to hear that's modulating the um, well something to do with the filter it's I think it's the filter amount rather than the filter cutoff that it's modulating so that's fantastic so we can do that across all three patterns let's just let that run and we'll do that <laughs> Have a really hard really hard modulation on that first one. And then it goes on, there's uh, other modulation parameters. If we look at the we've got a similar grid labeled modulation, the velocity Modulation is enabled by default and it can't be disabled. The other ones can be, these are switched off, but there's an on switch over here if we click that. So we've now got access to another modulation parameter. If we cl click and hold on that, we've got all the different modulation parameters available from the synth. This one is mapped to a default. Uh, so now there's a few of these are named, they're, they're sufficiently general to be named um, with the general parameters that they'll be linked to. So we've got pitch bend after touch. We don't have after touch even on a cheap or mid price MIDI keyboard. After touch is an expensive option. Pitch bend we've always got pretty much. Uh, I'm, I'm looking over there because I've got actually got a, a MIDI keyboard here. Um, and one called modulation. So we're going to stick with that one. Now out of these common modulation parameters that the most common are pitch bend you usually have a pitch bend wheel on a midi keyboard even a cheap midi keyboard and you usually have a modulation wheel as well so this one that's labeled modulation is almost certainly going to vary the setting that's mapped to the modulation wheel in the patch over in Xeon now if we flip over and look at that um, you might have noticed if you've got a keen eye that this patch is called Future Singer 2, but it's actually called MH Future Singer 2. If I look at Xeon built-in presets and select Future Singer 2, if we look at what's mapped to the modulation wheel, which we can do over at the right-hand side in this modulation matrix, it's on page 2. We can see mod wheel is mapped to mod 4 amount. That's That's... <laughs> That's mod 4 is something else in this matrix, so it's a double modulation. Mod 4 is 1, 2, 3, this bottom one. Now that's ma mapped to the LFO1, which is modulating the, the pitch. So we're going to get some sort of um, vibrato effect. interesting modulation so to cut a long story short if I go back to my version of the future singer 2 if we look at page 2 the mod wheel modulates the filter resonance which is this knob up here so that said if we go back over to step polyarp we should find that that resonance parameter varies with um, this guy I'm just going to change the um, this just changes the way this scale is labeled and also gives you the options 
for quickly setting the the parameter. So it's on min at the minute. If we let this play through on uh, pattern three. So we've got the velocity modulated, a nice sort of soft filter modulation. If we stick in some resonance on the filter. If we go to max. Pretty cool. I think you've got to admit. Um, we can do this mindfully. You know, I'm doing it just by swiping my finger there. But if we could look at the particular pattern, we might want to accent the um, well particular note. So if we go and try that, That's the basic features of step polyarp. Um, one last thing I'll show you is I did say this was a sequencer and an arpeggiator. So um, what can we do on that? If we duplicate pattern three, and then we let's see if we play through two times instead of four times, and then on the duplication we we'll leave that at four times, and then we're going to do something else, which is we're going to um, if you look over here on the right hand side of the screen where it says octaves by default it's it's not arpeggiating it's just playing the note that you've programmed but if you press the two for example instead of the one instead of playing the note it will alternate between that note and the octave uh, and it will alternate in a particular pattern which is determined by the little slashes and chevrons and so on to the right of that um, if we just demonstrate that, so we're on two and it's got a sort of low to high. And don't forget we're still hearing that modulation. If I turn that off, turn that octave back to one. Octave to three, four, now here's just a, just a hint really, um, one of the things that's good to, when you're programming something like this that's made up of repeating patterns, you want something to throw in a bit of variation, so we've got uh, the modulation changes, you know, the texture of the sound, but it doesn't really change. You know, if you play that pattern over and over again, it's very clear soon that it's repeating. So one of the hints, if you like, is this is an even number of steps in this pattern, 16 steps. If you put this octave to a, an odd number, then you get a kind of a roll in, I mean, to repeat still, but it's a... It's a sort of combinatorial repeat, if you like. Um, it repeats every, what, three times 16 or some factor of that. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, really. But anyway, here's the thing is if you put that to three, it doesn't seem as repetitive. Uh, 
and you can change the pattern with which those notes repeat. You can go up and down, down and up. up. Uh, we'll try. We'll try one of those. A couple of those. And finally, you can put in random. So that gives you a very, you know, nuanced and variable texture, even if you repeat that pattern over and over. Just one more thing um, to play with for now. You can choose this groove parameter, which, which normally, you know, it sort of slackens the, well not slackens, but it kind of swings the, the timing of the, of the notes. Now, if you do that with this particular patch on Xeon, it has an inter interesting effect of um, well, you're here, you're here. kind of slides the notes, put it up to max. Now that's a bit overdone. So the other thing we can do is we can change this gate parameter, which shortens the notes. Um, not really sure how this interacts with the the envelope. The amp envelope on this on the synth, but um, <laughs> you know, it's very complicated. This stuff once you start putting things together, it's never quite clear what's affecting. What. So you can see as I bring that gate down, you still get that sliding, but it limits the length of that. I think that's all for now. That's Step PolyArp. I think this is a fantastic application and I've just scratched the surface of it and uh, I would really highly recommend if you've got any interest in musical stuff at all, um, particularly if you've got any of the synth, synth apps on iOS. It's definitely worth a play with and I'm sure I'll look at some of the more advanced features of this as I get to know it.